Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. It is your boy, the Bad Wolf, also known as the Man in Black. How can I be of service today? What's that? You read the title of my YouTube. Cue the video. Sorry about that. One moment. Oh, how do I obtain an authenticated copy of my certificate of naturalization? Now, for those people doing the passport process, okay, filling out the DS-11 for the first time, how do I obtain a passport as a non-citizen U.S. national, etc. Okay, the rest of us who were born as living beings, living natural persons in the United States of America, on the geographical in the geographical sense, or in association with the ground that we own, and not the corporate overlay, we sometimes will use an explanatory statement. So the explanatory statement is nothing more than your statement using any codes, laws, court cases, situations, your specific details of your life and family that allow for you to say that this is why I'm a state citizen, a.k.a. a national of the United States, all right, or a na national non-citizen U.S. national, as referred to on the DS-11 for those who are obtaining the passport for the first time. Now, the explanatory statement is not mandatory. You can get one from me on blacksite32.com on the files page. However, you can create your own, which I've been telling people since day one. However, mine does have multiple years of information already compiled in there in a very simple, editable format that you can use for your process. Now, what we didn't know at first was that when doing this process, we believed that everybody had to use one. Well, this is not so. Once again, they are optional, they are good to have so that not only are you are educated with said information, but you're educating people in the um, passport processing division. You're also educating anybody, say in the courts or in your vehicle on the roadside with said information about who you are. And it is highly recommend that you get it notarized. Now, that being said, once again, what but what about the people who've come who've came here and who have become naturalized. Well, I'm glad you asked. So most of these people have a birth certificate or serial live birth or a Bible record or a DS-10 or a home created original document or even the ones with the baby feet print, which if you can get it, make sure you get yours from the hospital. Okay, it's wise advice, pay the fee. Add it to the bill, whatever, but get that one. Very powerful document there. Okay. Now, from there, and never give it away. Okay. From there, people have been naturalized. You've taken an oath to the United States of America. Okay. So this makes you not only a national, but also a legal person as well. And they start to indoctrinate you into having a legal identification, a legal presence versus your natural given name. You have a legal name. So on this side, you've got the private, and on this side, you've got the public, okay? Anything you put over here, they have charge and control and interest in. Over here, not so much. So when doing the passport process, I've been asked time and time again, do I need an explanatory statement? Do I use my naturalization certificate? Do I use my birth certificate? Well, here's the thing. If you've been naturalized, you don't need a, an explanatory statement because your certificate of naturalization says it all okay a lot of people are like you know well uh, but can i still use one yeah you can still use one it's not going to hurt but you don't need one we've already been able to do this process countless times and had the same effects so if you want to use one you can you can create your own you don't use an affidavit okay for this but you can use information from your affidavit of status or nationality but you're going to want to retitle it explanatory statement okay so, moving on. You've taken a pledge to protect the United States of America. And right here, I'm on the U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services website. So, once again, not private or covert information. It's literally right on the interwebs, as they call it. So, you took a pledge to protect the United States of America. So, on your private side, you're good. On your legal side, this also brings you into it. So, but do you need to get it authenticated? Because remember, when they issued you the document, that essentially brought you in on their uh, U.S. federal jurisdiction. OK, 
Okay. So that paperwork is going to be in the Hague. All right. So let's just see what they have to say here. If you required, if you are required to provide an authenticated copy of your certificate of naturalization, okay. Now keep it in mind that when they when you see the word certificate of, this this means copy and inside of something, okay. So this is not the master naturalization document, but this is a certificate thereof. All right, or certificate of citizenship to someone outside of the U.S. government, meaning a foreign country. If the country is not on the federal pay roll, uh, then they would be considered non-Hague, okay? Hague means federal, non-Hague means free world, okay? No jurisdiction. It's out there. Anybody can use it. But a, cert a, a Hague country member will only generally take a Hague document. That's why it can go either way. You'll find a lot of people will take their birth certificates and get it authenticated and apostilled or apostled or vice versa. All right. So I made a couple of videos on that. So you must make an appointment with your local USCIS office to authenticate your copy of your certificate. Authentication is a term used by the U.S. government of state and other departments to describe what USCIS refers to as a certified true copy. Hmm. These two terms refer to the same thing. When you require a certificate of naturalization or citizenship to be authenticated, be sure to say that you want a certified true copy of the certificate. Okay? So for those people who are doing the passport and want to have a birth certificate and want to make sure that it's not in the Hague system when submitting the document for reasons then explained, Watch my how to fill out the passport as a DS, D, how to fill out the DS-11 as a non-citizen national or U.S. national to learn more there. All right. You do not need to obtain a certified true copy if the United States government, so if the, your own government, the United States Corporation, asks you to provide a true copy, you don't need to because for them it's already in the right jurisdiction, not in the non-Hague true copy form, it's already on the same paper level jurisdictionally that they require, which is Hague. Ask for a copy of your certificate of official U.S. What? Okay, uh, hold on, let me read. So you do not need to obtain a certified true copy if the United States government asks for a copy of your certificate for official U.S. government business. You may use a normal copy. So whatever you have, as they give it to you, is already Hague. It's already in their jurisdiction. So it's legitimate for U.S. government business. But for example, when you apply for a U.S. passport, you must submit the original certificate of naturalization. The original, so the one that they gave you. That's considered an original document. And you should also submit a normal photocopy, so a picture of it, that has not been authenticated. So they want to see your original one that they're going to give back. And the other one they want, but they don't, they want a copy of it, but they don't want it to be authenticated. They don't want it to be in a non-Hague format. Okay. So in order to certify a copy for the certificate, you must make an appointment with your USCIS local office, bring in both your original document and your photocopy. We do not authenticate or certify copies as true through the mail or electronically. So you must actually take it in. Now for the DS-11, we have found that you can use it as is, and it's fine, okay? But if you wanted to, you can do it, but they're still gonna want a, what? Normal photocopy that has not been authenticated. Okay, so essentially what they're trying to say is, they don't really want one in both jurisdictions from you. They would prefer the one they already gave you to be good. But can you do it? Yes. So your original certificate of naturalization, photocopy of the certificate, a form of photo ID, 
Okay, and it can be a state issued driver's license, state ID, passport, or identification card, passport, or state issued card. Okay, so essentially that's it, guys. So you can authenticate if you're dealing with another company or country, rather, might be a company, <laughs> Freudian slip, or a country. OK, um, but if you do and you're dealing with a DS11 for us here, you can get it authenticated as well and submit it. But they also still yet want a copy of it in its original form. So there you have it. Your questions have been answered. All right. So I will talk to you guys later. Don't forget to hit that bell, like, subscribe. Check me out on Patreon underneath James C. Lovett. You can also use any of the links that will be propagating down here for other various offers and discounts, services, consults, and whatever else. And interesting other, drumroll please, videos. So that's about it. If you want to see all the videos, don't forget to go to James C. Lovett on YouTube.com. Also, you can use at the bad wolf on YouTube and find me. Click the view full video list or go all the way down to the bottom and click view more videos. That's the only way you're going to see. Otherwise, YouTube will only show you my top videos. So that's about it. Take care and I will talk to you guys later. Bad Wolf is out without a doubt like a scout on a new route.